Hey guys, it's Kyle Bennett, HardOCP.com, and uh, I wanted to make a little impromptu video showing you guys our first uh, our first test fitting with uh, the thing we rigged up to use a real water block on our thread ripper board here, and uh, we're going to go through this real quick. Um, show you everything that we got going on here. So obviously, you've got to uh, put a processor in here which we do have on hand. Um, when you put your, uh, if you ever go back into storage, you definitely want to make sure to put this in here to cover your pins. Uh, as you saw, we tore that one up last week trying to reinstall this, uh, this protective cover back on the socket. You can do it. Make sure you line it up perfectly straight when you do. But quite frankly, you truly don't need it in there as long as you use this one when you put everything back up so that it protect it from everything in the box. So I found this a lot easier once you get this out. Hook your tool in there, get out past the click. Get that out. Here's our processor. She's down there nicely. Back down. Back down. I have found it easier, although the instructions clearly say to close it, go one, two, and three. If any of you guys are working a garage, you know that it's always easy to get things all started a couple of threads first before you go tighten them all down, which is what I would suggest with this. I have found if you tighten this one all the way down, it says to close, one, two, three, right there on the socket, which people pointed out, that it kind of kicks up, it torques down really hard on here, and it'll make these really hard to get started back, to even get the thread started on them. What you do is you end up pushing down on them extremely hard. And I have found in my years of playing with motherboards that I tend to break things when I have to push down extremely hard on them. There. So your mileage may vary on that, so it is what it is. Um, so what we did was, obviously our, we didn't want to use the uh, Ace Tech AI we had. We wanted to get a real water block on it. So I went back through some of the things I had in the closet, stuffed old water cooling. I found an old, uh, si this is either 7, no, it's not 775, it may be an older 1050, I don't know. It's an older Intel backplate I had. And I just pulled, uh, I was looking for ways to uh, get us mounts in here. And I was going to head down this morning and find out what thread this is. I'm not surely sure. I think it's a 3.5 millimeter. Don't quote me on that. I'm trying to get specs on that. But I took this apart. And what I found was that these standoffs or these mounting posts were actually threaded for what we need here. Oop, wrong hole. So I got lucky. Once we get the thread out on this, you'd be able to go down and find some uh, screws that you could use. Another thing that was really interesting on this mount, which made it easier to make some guides cutting this morning, was, I mean, this is just luck, right? That the diagonal holes on this plate came out to be, uh, let me see, stick it on here, right? Yeah, see, that's why you don't drop things on your motherboard. The diagonal holes in this plate served as a really good guide to uh, just happen to be the same distance. Obviously, you can get some calipers out and measure that for your holes. So there we go. We got that. So this is how we're doing this. This is our water block. I have found in my years of doing this, you can argue with me on this or whatever you want. I like to uh, get it smoothed out with a really, really thin layer, then put a blob in the middle. So what we're doing here is we're gonna lay this right in the middle. And you're getting to see along with me just how this works. So what I did, got out in the garage. This is actually like it's a very stiff plastic bar. It was a mounting foot I had off a, 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 a test bench rack out there. So I cut that, got my holes right. Obviously I can't crisscross here because of the uh, way the tubing runs in and out of the water block. Mm -hmm. I need to make these holes just a little bit bigger. 
So once we get those fitted on here, okay. So let's see where we're at center wise. We're good about right there. Using my traditional uh, hold downs with springs on them. So I'm not applying any pressure yet. So this is where it's gonna be a little bit tricky in making sure we get this even. And of course, this is why I did wanna use the ones with the springs on them as well. So I'm just kind of feeling the tension on there and making sure we're staying even. It's still centered nicely. Feels good. Could be a little bit more. Could be about two millimeters that way, but this is a test fit, so we'll see how this works. Oh, shit. See, I'm so used to going X's that I messed up there. But with these springs on here, we should be able to tension down well and keep it even. It's feeling good. Checking my spring compression. Eyeballing it some, I am feeling and this block on this. This is a Cool Ants 360 block. Actually, the uh, block I'm going to use is a 370 block. I've got it on the system now. I'm trying to get the air blood out of it good. So, there we go. I don't know. This is my first attempt. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera. Let's uh, let's back it out and just see how it's seated. Obviously, we hadn't had any heat on this, which of course would help. Let's see what it looks like. Since I'm right-handed, I probably ought to be uh, shooting from the left, I guess, huh? Get my hand out of the way some. Need to widen out those holes just a little bit. Oh, that's a good sign. It's a good sign you can't pull the block off. We used, uh, we used too much paste but I think that just might work. I think once we get some heat to it and we start getting some flow across there. But so I've already uh, recorded all of our temps on the Ace Tech AO that came with the system. So we'll give this a try. Anyway, this is Kyle Bennett with Hard OCP.